Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Retro Cellar, where today we'll be covering something a little different. Uh, this is what we have today, it is the 4K GameStick Lite. Looks like a uh, large thumb drive of sorts. It has a uh, HDMI jack there to plug into your TV. And you could get this thing all over the internet. It's on um, Banggood, um, AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, tons of places for varying prices. I think I got this for 30 some bucks. I don't remember the exact price right now. Um, I saw several reviews on this thing and sort of had high hopes for it wound up not being quite as good as i thought it would be the performance was lacking we'll get into that when we uh, actually take a look at it uh, the box is unbranded it just says game if that's any kind of a logo i don't know uh 2.4 gig wireless controller gamepad it's no one's claiming ownership of it you know, it's not like it's an Amber Nick Pal Kitty Date East or anything like that. But they're all over the place. Um, there is a, a console out there called the Super X console. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, they have a version of this, a, a device similar than that, with a differing performance in it. Uh, if you know the Super Console X, the actual um, console itself. Put a picture right there of it for you uh they have a game stick version of it as well that apparently performs as well as that does and i've heard good things about that this uh i heard a couple mixed reviews i, I we'll get into it it's not that great so in the meantime why don't we do like a little pseudo unboxing of this thing then we'll play a few games of it and you'll see exactly the issues that it has so let's take a look at that now Okay, so here we have the box for the 4K Game Stick Lite. Uh, as you can see, as I said, there's no real branding on it. Uh, there's this game character, but there's really not much, you know, in the box. Uh, like I said, it just says 2.4G wireless controller gamepad. Original 3D rocker, special game rocker for arcade, high sensitivity, anti-skid design. That's in reference to the controller. Uh, product features. Double handheld support. 40 simulators. Open source system and dual players. Blah, blah, blah. TV HD output is HD. According to the game stick itself, it is... 4k uh we'll see about that <laughs> so why don't we just open it up see what we have inside this would be the device itself uh we have two playstation style controllers these man every system out there that has a wireless controller comes with these exact playstation style controllers uh, obviously don't have the same quality as the PlayStation controllers. Um, really cheap plastic. Uh, you feel like if you really wanted to, you could probably snap them. Uh, not rechargeable batteries. Takes, I believe, two AAA batteries, which I already installed in here. Um, the buttons, it's okay. Uh it feels like a little mushy, I guess you could say. Uh, the buttons are okay. Uh, trigger buttons. These actually feel pretty cheap. Uh, clicky, but definitely cheap. The surprise, however, is the analog sticks. Uh, they're actually not bad. Um, they have a rubber coating on it, so... It, they feel not as cheap as the rest of the thing. But these aren't bad at all. They're actually a bit of a surprise. And let's see what else we have here. This would be the power source, which is a USB, was that micro? Uh, 
what we have here. Uh, this is an extension for your uh, HDMI input because some TVs, um, the actual device might not fit into the uh, back of the TV or wherever you want to connect it. Uh, so this is actually pretty nice. This allows you a little bit of an extension to get at it should your device not actually fit in it. Uh, got two little, uh, they're not even stickers. Uh, little pictures of uh, Mario and Mario and Luigi. Who Nintendo wouldn't like that. Uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, this is a dongle that you would use to plug into the uh, game stick itself in order for your wireless controllers to function. Uh, that feature is not built into the game stick itself, so this is sort of a way around it. But and also would be a cheaper way to work that. Uh, we got the other controller. And this would be the manual, which isn't as bad as a lot of the ones that you get. They actually put some effort into it. Uh, it's actually color printing on it. Uh, basically what it does is shows you how to use the controllers, how to uh, hook them up, uh, your way around the menu, nothing like really, you know, deep or anything like that. And then the other side's in Chinese. And let's look at the actual game stick itself um right here it says 4k ultra hd game stick light uh 4k nah not at all in fact uh the uh, resolution on a lot of these games are actually quite terrible so i got this little cover for the hdmi jack to go in to the tv you have a, let's see, that's for the charging. Uh, this would be for the, the dongle, goes into there for the uh, wireless controllers. Your TF card or micro SD card. And that's it. Uh, the quality of this, again, it's kind of like the same cheap plastic as the controllers. Um, but it, this doesn't need to be durable. You're just plugging it in the back of the TV and that's it. But uh, nothing special. But a neat idea. I mean, uh, if, if you're into this uh, sort of thing, this isn't a bad idea. Uh, but why don't we plug it in the TV and uh, see what this thing's capable of. Okay, so here we have the main menu of the Game Stick 4K light or 4K game stick light. Uh, it's a, not a bad menu. Uh, it's kind of uh, not too complicated. It's pleasant looking. Uh, I've seen far worse. Um, and there's different ways uh, that you could uh, tool around on this thing. So you have the list, which is the list of every single game. Uh, in no particular order by system or anything. Uh, it's not alphabetical either. But as you can see, if you scroll upwards, there is 10,208 games, sort of. Uh, there are uh, repeats, um, I believe. Uh, if you look at this, it's two of the same game, but one is European version and another one is a US version. There's a lot of stuff like that and even then there's multiples still a ton of games Absolutely a, a ton. No doubt about it um, We also have where you can break it down according to emulators. So you have MAME Famicom Game Boy Mega Drive Game Boy Color Game Boy Advance Super Famicom PS1 Atari uh, don't, 
I believe that would be 2600 ish and this is it this is what you have to start off with anyway um it says that there's 40 simulators or emulators on it uh they are not accessible this way there's a possibility i haven't tried it yet to um download roms for other systems and see if they're playable on here i haven't done that yet i haven't really ripped into this much at all um, I can tell you that from what I can see, there's no way to configure this. I haven't researched it, but I don't even know if there is an, a way to upgrade firmware on it because it, there, it, the device isn't branded specifically for you to be able to figure out where to even get them. Um, and to be honest with you, the way these emulators run, I'm not entirely sure that that would even be worth it, to be honest with you uh what else do we have here you have history of the games that you can see that i've already played this is a really nice feature with as many games as there are on here you can do a search feature and look for a game if uh you don't want to scroll all the way down you could specifically search for it here this is a real nice feature uh but why don't we scroll over to this way and Take a look at a couple games. We'll start off with Game Boy. So here are the games. Again, these here are not in any particular order, alphabetic-wise. So here's an issue right off the bat. Uh, the game is Gradius, and I can't do anything with it. None of the buttons are clickable. Nothing, just stuck on this and the game as you can see isn't very cropped properly with some of the screens cut off on the bottom there but can't do anything with it let's go to another game let's try some castlevania And we are having the same issues where none of the buttons are working. Absolutely nothing. So, let's quit that. So anyway, here's the title screen to Double Dragon. Um, none of the buttons are working. I've attempted to configure the controllers. There really isn't much to do other than this. And uh, nothing. So Game Boy games do not function on this device. But you can look at the title screens if you want. So here's Marvel Super Heroes for MAME. Um, so it's not cropped all that great. Graphically, it's a little um, blurry, but it's not too bad. At least the controllers work. Yay. This isn't too bad. This would be Street Fighter 3 Alpha. Again, the cropping isn't perfect in it. She's beating my butt. And again, graphically, it's not that clear. So we're going to do Metal Slug here. Uh, this will show you where this is struggling graphically. I know this is a, a, a large screen 4K TV that I'm playing this on here. But uh, you could see how improperly cropped 
the uh, screen is and how kind of crappy the graphics are. And unfortunately, uh, there is no way to, for you to change the aspect ratio or put in scan lines or anything so that you can improve uh, the visuals on it. But, yeah, it is what it is. I don't know if you can see, there's some screen tearing in the back on this main game. It's playable. The audio is garbage on this. It doesn't look too bad. It appears to be properly cropped, but the controls, there's a bit of a lag, like a split second of a lag on it. Delay, you hear the click, and then watch the flipper go. It's like a half a second delay. So you gotta time things properly. It's like that on everything. So if uh, you're playing a game where timing is important, you're gonna be off. Again, the sound is real bassy, not clear at all. Again, it doesn't look that bad on the camera. Scroll through these uh, games listed, which again are not in alphabetical order. There's a real eclectic mix of stuff in here. As you look down here, again, no, this is no criticism of the device. So here is Sonic the Hedgehog on CPS. Look at this. This should not be taxing the system in the least. Look at that. This is awful. Totally unplayable. Look at that. Even screen tearing. Screen tearing, audio's glitchy, everything's in slow motion. There's no reason why this shouldn't be playing on it. This, this is not good, people. Listen to the click and see the jump at the same time. See that delay? <coughs> see, it's hard to even get it to go onto Yoshi. <laughs> 
So play a little F Zero here on Super Famicom. Trying the analog stick. Look too bad. So we are doing wipeout on the PlayStation One. Which actually doesn't look bad at all, I must admit. Oh, got a little glitchy there. Sounds okay. Don't really see much along the lines of screen tearing. Seems to be running relatively smooth. It uh, glitches every once in a while, like stutters. And this is a 3D-ish game there. Oh, there it goes again. Stuttering. And that delay on this controller can't quite make the turns right. See, oh, look at that. See, I spoke too soon. It is glitching. I seem to remember there being music in this. It's awfully quiet. I believe there is supposed to be music. Man, the responsiveness is horrible on this. All right, let's see if it could run this. Yet. Some minor screen tearing. issue with some of the other emulators because this should be struggling a little bit with the way it was doing CPS games and some of the Mega Drive games but not too bad this game. Probably get it for my PS1. Alright, so that was our look at the 4K Game Stick Lite. Um, are there pros to it? Yes, there's a lot of games on it. 
most of the games are actually playable. Um, it's convenient. I mean, what you could do with something like this, the controllers are crap, as we saw, uh, but it's really portable. You want to go play some old school games, throw this in your pocket, take a couple of controllers, go over to a friend's house, plug another TV, and you can play away on it. Had, as we looked, uh, screen tearing on some basic 16-bit games. Um, had a lot of repeats. You know, it's sold as having 10,000 games on it. There's a lot. There's thousands of games on it. But there's a lot of repeats. A lot of renamed games, homebrews, stuff like that. But it's not bad. Um, will I play this a lot? Probably not. It's probably going to go back in the box and collect dust. Like a lot of the items that I have here. Uh, but, I mean, you can't go wrong. It wasn't horribly expensive. Um, my kids will probably play with it, my son. Um, but there are probably better options out there. Like I said, the Super Console X game stick that they have is probably light years ahead of this one. But it's a neat concept. Um, and it functions. So I wouldn't recommend it. Like I said, there's other things out there. But if you're into this kind of thing... Uh, I'll probably put links down below to where you can get something like it. If not, you could just simply do a Google search for, you know, game stick and something will pop up and you could just shop around. But uh, that'll do it for today. And uh, thank you for joining us. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.